Welcome to Networking Field Day. The presentation that you are about to watch from Anuda Networks is being attended by a group of invited delegates who are here to ask questions, make comments, and offer their opinions about the technologies that you're about to see. For more information about this event, please visit our website at techfieldday.com or our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash techfieldday. Now let's look into the software components. <coughs> In this diagram, everything blue represents Anuta's software and it sits on top of your physical and virtual infrastructure. It could be your SDN controllers, your NFE, or your traditional physical devices. And we communicate to these over the management plane using CLI, SNMP, XML, or NetConf. Um, believe it or not, some of them have asked us to work with Nortel, very old devices, and we were able to develop the adapters for that as well. That's pretty tough. Because compressing control R is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to say to our engineers, they yeah. must have figured it out. <laughs> so on the, on the east-west side, because we integrate with the existing software, you have IPAM, you have certificate management, you have ticketing system, analytics, uh, syslog servers. Um, all of those things, we can consume information, we can contribute information to them. And we integrate or not bond with various ticketing systems. Inside NCX, we have a Yang model engine. It basically takes the service model in and communicates with the devices by delivering the code automatically. And all the service models and device models are saved in an external database. So that means we can scale rather easily to thousands of devices. And even if the NCX were to crash, because it's stateless, the next version will be able to recover almost all the services. Um, this goes into details as to how we do the abstraction. Your question about how can we add new vendors, right? Um, we have separated the service logic from the device logic. The service logic um, is, of course, written in Yang, but, but it can be customized using Python or Java, so you can develop the custom business logic. This business logic will be written against a normalized device model. So the normalized model will have abstract notions like create VLAN, create a pol ACL rule, construct the bandwidth. Now, behind the scenes, we convert those normalized models into the concrete mappings, whether it's a CLI device, API device. So for example, you move from ASA 8.4 to ASA 8.4, a dot five and the whole CLI has changed, you don't have to worry about that because we will develop a concrete mapping for the second version as well. So let's say in future, um, many vendors are coming up with their own native Yang models. Then you don't have to uh, worry about our normalized device model. The business logic can directly communicate using the Yang models from the device. So, so how we do you see know when code versions have changed? Because when we discover the infrastructure using SNMP, mm -hmm. we figure out the operating system, the capacity of mm -hmm. the device. So we have discovery also as part of the infrastructure. Yeah, is that just automatically run every so often, or is that every time a new policy is pushed? So it's both ways. You can periodically schedule a discovery, and you can use it as a documentation tool, so as well as on demand, you can uh, you can do the inventory as well. And one other feature is called reconciliation. So if someone goes and manually changes the configuration, then <laughs> NCX is going to cross correlate with what you configured in the policy and what you have in the device. And you have two options. You can say overwrite NCX policy mm -hmm. because maybe that's a P cert and that needs to be done. In which case, we will not change that configuration anymore. That will be the golden configuration going oh, So that you can tag certain configurations and certain devices to never change? So, so yes. Reason. So it, in, in a, when, when we do the reconciliation, we raise it as an alarm. So it's up to the network admin. Say, this is a known change. I want this. Or this is not expected. And mm -hmm. I need to push the chain config back onto the system. Mm -hmm. So we, we have seen different uh, deployments in in enterprise, for example, they, they don't want us to overwrite. Uh, that will cause more problems. So oh, yeah. They would rather have someone go check why this happened. Um, in a service provider scenario, there I see more and more 
uh, they are giving power to NCX uh, to go and do the automation. If a device is down for an extended period and the configuration has gone through several iterations, when that device comes back online, will it step through all the iterations or does it move directly to the final state? So can you take so that one? Right now, uh, we have a way to do the final stage. Uh, this is a very common scenario where we call this as an offline config. You could provision a known or a device that's upcoming in the future that you're going to bring online. You can pre-provision it, but your pre-provision action one, action two, action three, action four, and they all become one config snippet mm -hmm. that we're going to push down when the device comes online. But we could also slice it down, uh, but right now the default behavior is we're going to send one configlet. That's a combination of all the actions to the device when the device comes online. So, so they all get merged and? Merged and into one. I yeah. see. And you're doing that? Declarative, de in a declarative fashion at the modeling layer? Yeah, since, okay. so we have this Yang engine that's a config tree. So it's, it's a, since it's a config tree, I can do an update, delete an update. But once we are going to generate the CLI, we're generating the CLI out of the config tree that is a Yang model. So we are actually ge generating the final version, not the individual operations. So you're going to get a final, final uh, uh, semantics that we want to push down. So as part of the service definition, you can also define the SLA for that service. So you can describe the uh, key performance indicators in Yang itself. So you can say this CPU should never go beyond 90% or the number of contacts should be a less than 80% utilization. So you can introduce your own rules as part of the Yang model itself. So when we when we reconcile the infrastructure, we get the statistics, we are able to enforce the SLAs as well. And we can say this service is now out of SLA. And as part of the Yang model, you can even say, okay, if the CPU is 90%, I want to spin up one more virtual firewall. Right? So you can write such logic, if then else kind of logic, within the Yang model itself. Especially in a um, high frequency environment or in a managed services environment, you you can codify some of these normal rules um, as part of the service itself. And, and on what part of the model is that? At the this one, the service model itself. So it's that is an imperative. Then now we're we're actually declaring statements and telling the business logic how we want to configure devices. So that gets pushed up the model and is handled in a de in a declarative fashion at the lower model. I, I can't see the text, but at the lower model as well. So there's you guys are there's two sides that we're declaring things or so the declaration is coming only at the service layer the up, the up, the upper dotted box is where you're declaring what you would like to accomplish that's where you're expressing your intent okay but that intent is not expressed in a vendor specific way it's, it's vendor neutral in the upper box and once you get down to the second box is when that intent is translated to a vendor specific implementation okay so but I, so I do, would have to attend. For all intents and purposes, I don't just say create something. I can I can do functions and say, hey, yeah. if this condition exists, then do this. Right, right. Okay. You, you so separate it, intent from configuration, right, right? right? So you're modeling intent, and then you're translating that into configuration that you actually push the devices. Exactly. And the intent itself is broken down further. The intent, if you see the service intent, that is what that, that that's an action that you'd like to do. If you look at the KPI. KPI is a trigger. So I have a bunch of data. I'm going to watch on the data. And I'm going to write a condition on the data. And then the condition is going to result in an action. And the action itself could be service intent. I want to bring down a device, or I want to bring up a uh, device. I want to go and sh shut down an interface. I want to bring up an interface. I want to change my BGP peer. So all of them are different intents that you want to do in a vendor neutral way. But how do you want to drive that intent? That's where the KPA model comes in. Do you want to trigger from the infrastructure? where the intent is driven, or the intent is driven by a not bound API, like a self-service portal, where a human being is actually performing the intent. All of them are possible because we have an API-driven product, and then we can have different applications drive the intent. So, Ooh, go ahead, sorry. I know. Um, so, I'm hearing some more what I would consider standard monitoring tools as well. Do you guys have any way to help us delineate like where your traditional monitoring tools end 
and where this begins because it seems to me like a lot of what we do with standard SNMP monitoring and notification has to exist in this product for it to do what it does. So we don't collect everything out there, but we collect enough so that we can take some of the orchestration stations. We are interested in events that are like interface up down, uh, BGP PR is down, some of those crit critical metrics we are interested in. But we're not going to be an out and out SNMP trap collector. So for that SNMP trap collection, typically in a large MSP, there's going to be a specialized product, Splunk, for example, to collect syslogs. And SNMP trap collection is also delegated to a different product. We're not a full-fledged collector in, in that sense. But we are interested in the uh, decisions that external entity is going to take. So you can have a network collector outside. They can churn the data. They can collect the data. They can churn the data. And they can expose some data points, key data points to us. And then we can take the decisions based on the data points. But things like interface down, config has been modified, are so fundamental. We, we are going to be in the scheme of things to collect that data, but not all, not all the data, because it becomes now a, a scalability and performance issue, and we, we typically don't want to get into that. So that's where we rely on the ecosystem partners, where there are specialized products for specialized actions. We are still a provisioning platform, but uh, we collect bare minimum information as required. But I, I, and part of the reason for that question is um, it's not easy in the enterprise environment to get great monitoring and orchestration tools. It's, it's really difficult for those of us with boots on the ground to tie a business need to that, to people who don't understand networking. And so we really struggled, you know, well, well we've got this product who does this, this, and this, and then we've got this product that does these other things, and now you want another one. So I guess what I'm trying to figure out is, as we discuss this tool, where can we say, okay, well, we get enough here that we don't really need this anymore. Um, and um, uh, that information yeah. will be helpful for us in the future or, or, to you, figure out where this fits. Yes, can you use this to replace what you have or use what you have to replace the functionality here? The first one. Okay, so. Yeah, I mean, how would, how, what, what, what do we have today that we could get rid of? If, if all I care about is interface up down, yeah, yeah. I lost the BGP peer. I mean, those are things I care about sure. and that I, I want to be notified of yeah. because it means something's broken. So from an orchestration standpoint, that, that's our bread and butter. If, if there are some legacy implementations like manual processes, like a automation scripts that they have built, that, that is something that we can uh, enhance and make that infrastructure better, possibly replace. And the bigger the customer deployment, large MSP, large enterprise financials, they will look for a specialized product for a specialized function. That's when the uh, boundaries are going to get a little bit more dicey. But if it is a small enterprise, yes, we could replace some of their monitoring solutions, but only in some cases. But typically, that's not area where we, we would like to continue to invest. Our investment is going to be purely on the provisioning aspects, and we go depend on the ecosystem partners to go and make sure that uh, we are best of breed for orchestration, and there's best of breed for monitoring. And that's how we would like to take a look. You say orchestration. Um, Talk to me a little bit about dynamic environments or highly dynamic environments. You talk about OpenStack. You show um, Amazon and Azure um, that we have well-documented APIs. Um, is the product actually making changes on the fly? And if so, where is that version controlled? How are we notified? How do we do telemetry and correlation? Right. So the only time where dynamic aspects are coming in is the KPA. I have defined some metrics that I'm expecting the product to watch and when a condition is met, I want to go and perform some intent. That's when the dynamic nature is coming. And the classic example is the VNF scale out. I'm going to be watching for the number of whips and the number of open connections on the load balancer. And once it exceeds a certain limit, I want to scale out the load balancers. So the underlying infrastructure of the vendor has to support that scale out model. But from our point of view, there's a, there's a data that we are watching. There's an API that we know that we can work with to go and scale it out. All of those things are already built into the, into the intent and the KPI model. So dynamic nature comes in those aspects. And some of the dynamic nature may be driven by the layer on top of us, because we have an API. There may be a different monitoring solution. There may be a different an analytics platform that may be churning the data and triggering our API to go take corrective actions. But ours, again, um, there's a bit of static nature within the product. This is actually where the difference between classic SDN controller versus an orchestration solution comes in. 
we are not an SGN controller. We are an orchestration platform where some of the flows are predefined, and we take actions based on that. So bringing all of those things together is very difficult, right? So bringing all of those different inputs in, whether it's you know your your ITSM systems, your performance management systems, and uh, IPAM, you know con your consumable infrastructure, you know to generate configuration. How how do you guys approach? That problem, you know, if, you know, MSPs and, and large service providers, you know, have huge development staffs, you know, to, to actually, you know, help support this. How do you how do you see this translating into the enterprise where, you know, those types of resources aren't aren't as common? Our sweet sweet spot is definitely medium to large enterprise MSPs, large telcos, large SPs. That's definitely the sweet spot, because the, towards the end of the day, uh, the customer requirements, the complex the customer requirements the more, more um, DevOps is going to be involved. Programmability comes in, somebody with Python experience, modeling experience are going to be required. So our sweet spot is definitely a medium and large enterprise and MSPs and telcos in that area. So in the interest of time, I'll cut short the presentation, we'll go into the demo. Um, before I leave, just a list of all the vendors, the 35 different vendors and different platforms we have validated. It's also available on our website. Uh, we'll continue to update this. Um, the list continues um, as well. So with that, I will hand it over to Praveen for the product demo.